I want to give my recommendation to you for a system that will let you run a microwave, a 5,000 BTU air conditioner, uh, a 12 volt refrigerator freezer, and a, uh, a USB driven internet router for 11 days at work for me and I could have continued a lot longer. So let's start with the panels. I recommend you go with 100 watt panels. The reason being is that they're super light, they're easy to deal with. And in a storm, when a storm is coming, like for me in Florida, a hurricane, you're going to want to bring the panel inside before the storm gets here and put it back out when the storm is gone. You simply unplug the cables here that go to the controller, bring the panels inside, and let the storm pass and put it back out. Why I'm recommending this, this is like $80 right now. This is a 240 watt. You can get the 250 now. It's like 309 bucks. So you do the math, okay? To get 200 watts out of these, two of these put together and just plugged in in series, that would be 160 bucks. They're lighter than this. They're easier to handle than this. And so I'm recommending you start out with two of these. Um, the controller I'm going to show you is at 12 volts. We'll let you actually plug in three of these. It'll handle 290 watts maximum at 12 volts. And so let's go the look at that. The controller I'm recommending for you here is this Victron 120. Fantastic controller, a couple of really good, great company, a couple of really, really good benefits. Number one being that uh, once you've got your solar panels connected to it, um, it will then show you what's going on with it via Bluetooth to your phone. And that allows you to go outside, take your Bluetooth connected phone, go to the panel and move it, you know, tilt it up, tilt it down so you can see exactly the perfect angle that you're going to be able to get the uh, watts coming in from the sun at. Super efficient. This is the first one I bought. You can't do that. It's basic. It's not junk, but it doesn't allow that to be done. This one does. The other thing that's awesome about this controller is it'll work in 12 volt, 24 volt, or 48 volt. So if you want to, at a later date, change your system over to a 24 or 48, you don't have to go out and buy a new controller. This one will cover you across any one of those voltages. Absolutely fantastic controller. Also, it's a Victron item, so it talks to all the other Victron components. This lets me um, monitor my system from anywhere in the world. I love the servo. But this controller is where you want to start. Just a great, great quality item. Another one. Okay, that brings us to the batteries. And the main reason why I'm, I'm suggesting you start out at 12 volt. Um, the other reason is because of the load. And for what I'm drawing, I, I don't need anywhere near uh, even 2,000 watts. So 12 volt does that very safely, very efficiently. And what I'm recommending you start out with is two of these 100 amp hour uh, batteries. The reason that when I first started, I did a 200 amp hour. What I didn't realize is you can't mix the different amp hour ratings in the same parallel string. This is a parallel string here. All these batteries connected together. Maximum of four. So if you start out with a 200 amp hour and then you realize you need a little bit more, you might not only need 100 amps, you got to buy another 200 amp hour battery. Every battery you connect together in a parallel string has to have the same rating. Some guys say you don't. I spoke to the manufacturer. What they told me was if I mixed a 100 amp hour with a 200 amp hour, they'd void the warranty on both. And this is a very good company. Uh, they even took back the uh, 200 amp hour battery that I had, gave me a 90% refund after a year, and then I went ahead and converted it all to 100 amps so I could add at 100 amp increments. These are 350 bucks. A 200 amp hour battery is close to 800 bucks. Let's talk about the cables now. It's very, very important. This is a safety issue. And so what I'm running is one AWG cable. The size cable you need is determined by your loads. Um, but I went ahead and increased the cable size well over my load. The reason why I'm running a, a 2200 watt inverter, 2000 watts is very safe at 12 volt. And it's a lot more than I need. The combination of my air conditioner, the microwave and the little 12 volt refrigerator all running at the same time is only a thousand watts. It's roughly double my requirements. Plenty of time for growth, or room for growth, I should say. And uh, let's me expand down the road. So these cables, the 1AWG that I'm using, they will allow at 12 volts up to 1920 watts to run through them, which is just below what the inverter can run safely. And that's why I've chosen them. Um, like I said, it's double what I'm, what I'm using, but it gives me room for growth and it also gives me peace of mind and safety. The cables, if you run too much load through them, they get hot, the wires melt, and it creates a fire. So 
This 1AW Gene 1920 watts, that is 150 amps at 12 volts. So what you do right here at the battery, you have to have a fuse in place. Now the fuse is a little bit bigger than your max load on the wire. Um, I've got that at 175 amp. And as soon as the cable tries to send 175 amps through it, the fuse will break to protect it. In addition to that, I also put a breaker. And so this breaker is rated for exactly the same rating as the wire. This is 150. So as soon as there's 150 amps going through the wires, that will trip. It's just a little on-off mechanism, just like a normal breaker in your house. Just push this button and it uh, activates or, or opens or closes the circuit and you're good to go. So for you guys, you would just connect your inverter, these wires, directly to that. And then your negative, I strongly recommend you get a shunt just for monitoring your battery, your battery state of charge and uh, current voltages. And um, that's all you need. So cable is super important, guys. Don't undersize this. And um, this one lets me run everything I need without a single worry and gives me room to grow. I could run two air conditioners if I needed to on those wires. This Giandel uh, inverter that I'm recommending, this is fantastic. Will Prowse talks about these on his website. They are super reliable and super inexpensive. I think that's around $300. And here's the last thing you're gonna need. You're gonna need some little device to allow you to plug in your fridge. Your fridge is 12 volt and let you plug in all your other USB devices so you can charge them up. Your internet router, your iPad, your cell phones, um, anything else you can charge USB. You wanna do that directly. You've got two kinds of loads on your battery, guys. You've got um, direct loads, which are the fridges, and anything you can run off of these little devices are 12 volt direct. That's the most efficient use of your batteries. Everything else is gonna be coming off the inverter and that requires a conversion from the DC battery to alternating current. So you can plug things into it like you normally use in your house. And that's less efficient. So off of here, what I'm running is my air conditioner, 5000 BTU, and I'm running my little microwave. And over here, I'm running everything else your cell phones, um, your iPad is getting charged, and your food. This guy kept everything in beautiful. It's got two freezer components in the front and a refrigerator section in the back big enough for a jug of milk. I had cold cuts, uh, water, soda. Everything I needed to keep refrigerated was in here, and it did a fantastic job for the 11 days. One other thing I want to talk to you about is this guy. This is fantastic. When you've lost power, you're going to lose your internet. Your router's gone down, your Xfinity's gone. Um, you don't have a way to stay connected internet-wise. In a disaster, what I didn't expect in this, I lost my phone too. AT&T was down. This little hotspot guy here, uh, it's USB connect. So again, it's directly charged off the batteries, no inversion needed, fantastic. Has a 10 hour battery built into it. So once it's fully charged, I could take it in the house too. But I just left it connected and left it out here and um, I was able to uh, connect to it from anywhere in the house. Um, this gave me full internet uh, and full telephone. When my phone failed, the phone is AT&T, I was able to connect to this uh, and use WhatsApp to speak to people. I had no voice, I had no, once I connected to this, I could use text, and of course I could use the internet on it as well, but I just connected my iPad directly to this, and it was absolutely fantastic. And when the power came back on, uh, Xfinity did not come back on for another seven or eight days. So I just connected the televisions to this guy, uh, their smart TVs, and I had full uh, internet on the big TVs as well. Fantastic unit, Solus, absolutely terrific. I got another video about this and, and I recommend these highly. Another thing you should think about for a power outage is these. And they are also USB chargeable, no batteries. So they plug into these little wires right here. Um, and what, you, what I did with these, you know, your house gets pitch black. When there's no power, um, it's just dark. The darkness is amazing. So I hung these on every wall and in the entrance into every room. And they are motion sensing right here, that little deal. And so every time I go into a room or walk through a hallway, this thing lit it up and I was not breaking my toes every time I left uh, any room in the middle of the night. Fantastic options. Um, I use this all the time, and that's what I would challenge you to do as well. Don't go out there and spend $1,000 on a generator that sits in your garage and we're forcing you to uh, exercise it every month or so, or else the gas turns to jelly and you never use it unless there's a problem. Every week I cut the grass. 
This guy gets plugged in. I've got an electric mower. I have to trim the grass. There's the edger. They get recharged on this. I even eventually got to the point to where my uh, little boat here, I was running a nine horse uh, Yamaha on the dinghy. I got, I upgraded that to an electric motor. I kept the gas just in case, but I got an electric motor on that too. So anytime I go in these canals here, even out to the ocean, um, this little guy here recharges the battery. So I'm getting constant payback, constant use from it. Not just sitting here waiting on a disaster. The key so, in all this, guys, is that it's not as expensive as they're telling you. And now is the time for you to get involved with this. Go ahead and make this small investment. Get the system in. Get it put together. Um, and play with it. See what you can do. See what you can't do. See what you need. And then when the storm comes next season, you're ready. Or if you're going into rolling blackouts, if you're in one of those parts of the world, it, you know what you can handle. And you know what more you need. But now is the time to do it before you find yourself in the emergency. Start it out now. Play with it. Tune it. See what you need.